Long range, high altitude reconnaissance aircraft like Lockheed's U-2 or the SR-71 Blackbird have literally changed the way our military sees the world. This is five things you don't know about spy planes. The completion of the U-2 was fast-tracked thanks to heightened Cold War tensions with the Soviet Union. On July 29, 1955, just under nine months after signing the contract that ordered it, the first U-2A was delivered. Its slim, glider-like design was borrowed from the profile of a traditional sailplane and allowed the U-2 to fly missions covering over 3,000 miles, carrying 700 pounds of the latest photo reconnaissance equipment to an unprecedented altitude of 70,000 feet, which was at the time well above the range of Soviet surface-to-air missiles. When flying at full speed, the SR-71 Blackbird's surface temperature could reach 900 degrees Fahrenheit. To withstand this extreme temperature, engineers decided to build the aircraft's skin almost entirely out of titanium. This came with several problems, though, the biggest being that titanium is extremely difficult to work with and then that it is also quite scarce. To overcome the first problem, engineers developed entirely new fabrication processes that made use of specialized tools that were built out of titanium. The second issue required a little bit more creativity. Because most of the titanium available in the United States at the time lacked the required purity, the CIA established dummy corporations all across Europe for the purposes of purchasing titanium. In the end, they purchased most of it from the USSR. So ironically, the Soviet Union sold us the titanium that we used to build the spy plane that we then turned around and spied on them with. Although many have speculated about the extraterrestrial nature of the goings-on at Area 51, the United States government has remained silent. Until recently, when previously classified documents were released that revealed that the airfield was specifically developed to test spy planes. President Dwight D. Eisenhower personally signed off on the acquisition in 1955. And in the years that followed, officials from the Air Force, from the CIA, and from Lockheed began to conduct tests at the site, first of the U-2, and then eventually the A-12, which became the SR-71 Blackbird. It is believed now that the increase in reports of UFOs in the area were actually sightings of these developmental aircraft. On July 20, 1963, less than a year after the first SR-71 was delivered into service, the aircraft achieved a sustained speed of Mach 3 at the astounding altitude of 78,000 feet. Even in retirement, the SR-71 was a record setter. In March 1991, aircraft made its final flight from Los Angeles, California to Washington, D.C. in one hour, four minutes, and 20 seconds. Today, 34 U-2s are still flying, and Lockheed's Palmdale facility keeps the 32 airframes that belong to the U.S. Air Force in operational condition by putting them through a regularly scheduled overhaul known as PDM, Programmed Depot Maintenance. Thanks to PDM, the U-2 that's done the most flying is one that was made in the 1960s and now has about 30,000 accumulated flight hours. As the development of spy planes moves into the 21st century, we can now look back on six decades of their service. But what was once subject to top secret classification has now become the object of pop culture fascination. Can you think of any examples of spy planes that have crept into the popular culture entertainment universe? 
If so, share your comment online or reach out to us through Twitter using hashtag 5ThingsYouDon'tKnow.